Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, a lot of you have probably heard that Starfinder 2E is coming out. And we've got the field test for the soldier class. But, I bet a lot of you are wondering, how the heck can we play that? The answer is simple. You need to learn how to play Pathfinder 2E. But don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to be covering character creation today. And if this video does well, then I might do some other videos and even streams teaching you guys how to play the game. But, yes, this video is mainly for people coming from Starfinder and wanting to learn how to play Pathfinder 2E for when Starfinder 2E comes out. With all that being said, let's just get right into this. So first, let's talk ability scores. All the ability scores that you Starfinder players are used to are here. Strength, Dexterity, Con, Charisma, all of them are here and work generally the same as you're used to. However, how you get them is kind of different. It's very similar to the point buy system from Starfinder, but instead of having 10 points to buy your ability scores and then modify it with your race and theme, everything is dependent on your ancestry, which is essentially your race, your background, which is essentially your theme, and your class. You also do get four free ability boosts to spread around after you're done with those steps. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. And of course, the first step is picking your character concept like you would in Starfinder. But because this is Pathfinder, you're going to have to pick more sword and sorcery concepts rather than the tech concepts you're used to, in most cases. Next, you're going to need to pick an ancestry. So when we get them, this is going to be your Vesk, your Sheeran, things like that. But for now, you're stuck with the Pathfinder races. However, there are three ancestries in Pathfinder that are part of the list of core races for Starfinder. These are the Human, the Android, and the Isoki. However, the Isoki is an uncommon ancestry and the Android is rare. Meaning, most GMs are going to make you stick with human if you want Starfinder race. However, there are other races, such as goblins and elves and even dwarfs. Just like in Starfinder, you're going to start with a few racial hit points based on your ancestry. But remember, you only get these racial hit points once. After that, your hit points will depend on your class. When you start character creation, all of your hit points start off at 10 as normal for point buy in Starfinder. But picking your ancestry gives you certain ability boosts and possibly ability flaws. These are always going to be plus 2 or minus 2, depending on whether it's a boost or flaw. Each ancestry has their own ability boosts and flaws. However, you can ignore these and just take two free boosts instead. However, during this step, you can never boost the same ability score twice. You can, however, boost a flaw to get rid of the negative. Then you're going to pick a heritage. This is your subrace, or what kind of human, or isoki, or whatever ancestry you are. For example, you could be a skilled human. Each one of these heritages gives you a certain ability. For example, skilled human gives you two extra skills. You also get to pick an ancestry feat at first level, and every four levels afterwards. These are exactly what they sound like. Feats tied to your ancestry. So instead of Isoki having cheek pouches automatically, in Pathfinder 2e, you gotta take a feat for that. But if you don't really care about the cheek pouches, there are plenty of other feats that you can pick from. Otherwise, the ancestries work pretty much the same as you're used to in Starfinder. In the Ancestry, it will tell you whether you're small, medium, what your speed is, and what your vision is, as well as any special abilities you have that aren't tied to feats. Okay, next up is background. And this is very similar to what you guys know of as themes. However, they do work a little bit differently. Almost all backgrounds work essentially the same. Firstly, it'll give you a choice between boosting two different ability scores. I'm going to use the Bounty Hunter background as an example for this. If you were to choose that background, 
you would have to choose between strengths and wisdom for your first ability boosts. The second ability boost you get from your background is completely free. But again, you cannot pick the same ability score twice during this step. Backgrounds also give you two skills and a skill feat. Skill feats are similar to ancestry feats, but they're tied to a skill rather than an ancestry. For example, the bounty hunter background gives you the experience tracker skill feat, and that's tied to survival, which of course you also get training in by taking this background. The second skill that you get from your background will always be a lore skill. Lores are skills that represent specific knowledge. For example, you get legal lore from the bounty hunter background. This essentially means you know about legal stuff, which normally would be covered by the society skill, but because you have specific knowledge about legal stuff, you can use legal lore instead of society and get a lower DC. The same is true for other lore skills in different subjects. And now we come to class. First, remember those ancestry hit points we got in step one? Well, now we get to add to that. How many hit points you add depends on your class, but you always add your constitution modifier. For example, if you're a barbarian, you get 12 plus con extra hit points on top of what your ancestry is. If you're a wizard, it's 6 plus con and so on and so forth. Before I get into the rest of class, I do need to explain the training system in Pathfinder 2e. Your training determines your proficiency bonus in, well, everything. Whether it's your attack rolls, AC, saving throws, or skills. The only thing this doesn't apply to are your ability scores and your HP. And of course, anything that doesn't go off numbers. If you are trained in something, then you get a proficiency bonus of 2 plus your level. This is in addition to your ability score modifier and any item bonuses you have. If you're an expert, then your proficiency bonus is 4 plus your level. If you're a master in something, then it's 6 plus your level. And if you're legendary, it's 8 plus your level. Your class will tell you what you're trained in and what you're an expert in. This can be anywhere from armor, to weapons, to saving throws, to perception. Your class also gives you an ability boost that is always going to be your class's main ability score. So for example, if you're playing a barbarian, it's going to be strength. If you're playing a rogue, it's going to be dex. However, some classes give you a choice. For example, if you're a fighter, then you can be dex or strength based. For the soldier, they're constitution-based. So that's going to be the ability score you boost at this point. Your class will tell you what class abilities it gives you, including suppressing fire from the soldier. It will also tell you what class feats you can choose from at what levels. Every martial class, so like soldier, fighter, barbarian, gets a class fee at first level. Spellcasters, however, do not. Unless, however, the class in question gives you a specific one, such as with the cleric and the druid. And this is a good time to talk about what feats are designed to do in Pathfinder 2e. They work similarly to feats in Starfinder. However, no feat in Pathfinder 2e is designed with damage in mind. Feats in Pathfinder 2e are designed to give you more options for your character, not just so you can do more damage. Don't get me wrong, damage is important, but it can't be everything. In fact, conditions are way more important in Pathfinder 2e than damage is. That suppress condition is absolutely amazing for Pathfinder 2e. The fact that you get to slow them down and give a minus one to their attack rolls is nuts. If this video does well, then I'll probably cover all the conditions in a video at some point. But the thing is, is that you got to remember that most penalties and bonuses don't stack. There are only three types of bonuses and penalties in Pathfinder 2e. Circumstance, item, and status. 
Well, those three do stack with each other, they don't stack with themselves, which makes it much harder to stack bonuses and penalties with a single character. This is why teamwork is so important in this system. Because while one class might not be able to give a circumstance penalty, another class most certainly could. After that, though, we do have a couple steps left. First, we do get four free ability boosts. But like the other steps, we cannot pick the same one twice during this step. But remember, once you go from one step to another, you can continue to choose the same ability score. So, for example, you might be not be able to choose Charisma twice in Ancestry, but once you go to Background, you can choose Charisma again. The last thing is Equipment, but I'm not going to go too much into that, because that's a whole video all by itself. But this is where you pick your armor, your weapons, things like that. And, of course, if you're playing a Spellcaster, you're still going to need to pick your spells. But again, that's a whole other video all by itself. And that's pretty much it for the basics of character creation. If you guys want me to fill out an actual character sheet on a video, or if you want me to cover something else you don't understand, let me know in the comments. In the meantime though, if you haven't seen the field test for the soldier yet, I did a video on that right here. Also, if you want Google Sheets for all my Pathfinder and my coming up Starfinder builds, you can check out my Patreon page in the description below. And Pathfinder 2E rewards teamwork and innovation. So, until next time, teamwork is vital.